stories of countries in the Middle East building nuclear weapons for their newspapers. The threat is serious. Prehistoric times when dinosaurs roamed the earth. Mm. Not three measly years before I was born. The dissolve of the USSR could be attributed to many things. Some would even say it was inevitable due to the structure of communism. <coughs> Americans! <laughs> but the real reason Soviet Russia collapsed. By no means complete freedom in the beginning. According to the tracement in the return, one reporter was told to be fired because he had said 60% of people polled supported Gorbachev's policy. That's actually pretty good. But Gorbachev had said everyone supported his policies. The thing about freedom, though, once it's given, it's impossible to stop. And Glashnov came to resemble what we know as Papers could cover world events, organized crime, Stalin's terror. They could even criticize the government. <laughs> As the communist stranglehold began to slip, the Eastern Bloc countries cried out for independence. And one after another, they slipped away. And not a single Gorbachev once told his aide in reply to his concerns about the Eastern Bloc succeeding, they'll stick with us and we'll stick with them. Let's fit them in a new way. That's fine. Now, as important as these events are, the final push that sent Soviet Russia over the edge was its economic crisis. Before Gorbachev came into power, the economy was pretty stable. Maybe just a little tiny was a flop. But according to Traceman, the Soviet Russia had to import tons of grain to feed the, their people. And to pay for this grain, they sold oil, which is all hunky dory. But due to shifts in world commodity prices, the price of grain skyrocketed and the price of oil fell by nearly 50%. Not to mention, with the new free market in place, Wages jumped, and the government had to pay for this. By the time Gorbachev left office, foreign debt had risen from $29 billion in 1985 to 
97 billion dollars in 1991. The Cold War gave the appearance of a peaceful society, but underneath lie the tension fraught with nuclear annihilation. Gorbachev saw and understood what it would mean to have a nuclear war, and so he began to disarm. The Cold War really ended because there was very little sense of military vulnerability. By the time Gorbachev was in power, most of the U.S.'s buildup had ceased, and the Soviet experts were confident, according to the Trace Man, that they could outwit any U.S. missile. And this is basically how it goes. My armada is bigger than yours. And ten, ten months in office, Gorbachev had declared the goal of a nuclear Trying to get Reagan in on his plans, who saw the world, who saw world affairs in terms of moral, and wished to eliminate nukes also. In 1986, at a summit with Reagan, Gorbachev and Reagan agreed to the 50% reduction of the strategic forces of five years and the complete elimination of missiles before 10, according to Trace Man. Also, in 1987, they both signed the INF Treaty, otherwise known as the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, eliminating intermediate range nuclear weapons. And in 1988, Gorbachev, on his own, reduced the Soviet military to 500,000 troops and 10,000 tanks. Gorbachev's application for disarmament resulted in and became the basis for better international relationships, as we know today. According to NobelPrize.org, Gorbachev was once awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for international relationships because he allowed the Eastern Bloc countries to succeed from Soviet Russia peacefully. He bettered his relationships with the U.S., basically ensuring the world was safe from a nuclear war, which would be very terrible, World War III. And he helped tear down the Berlin Wall, finally reuniting East and West Germany. According to freedominfo.org, this is the opening statement of the Delhi Declaration on the Principles of a Nuclear Weapon Free and Nonviolent World. This document is largely forgotten as we deal with countries in the Middle East and as we face the terrors of possible nuclear annihilation. Some principles of the Delhi Director Declaration make a lot of sense, and I don't see why we cannot treat everyone like this. Human life must be acknowledged as the supreme value. Nonviolence must become the basis of human coexistence, and the right of every state to political and economic independence must be acknowledged and respected, according to freedominfo.org. Gorbachev never intended for the USSR to fall apart. But because of him, communism in Russia could dissolve, nuclear threat was diminished, and we now have a new way of Gorbachev, the most influential person 